The KZCRN is the best earphone ever. Sorry, I'm in the dusk. I have been looking at trying to do a vibrator for the longest time. The complicated part is that it's not just as easy as, oh, do this, do that, do yeah. this, do that. You, you have to basically set the foundation first and setting right. that foundation is the hardest part. So, signature look of superiority. Please ask me your questions, peasant. I can't even look at you, like, no eye contact. Hey, so I'm here with Critical, and I'm gonna ask him a couple questions because I think the only thing that I can really add to the whole conversation about these earphones that I'm talking about today is to show you what a CEO product reviewer collaborator goes a, through. A CEO? I don't know, a, a CEO. Oh, I thought you meant like the the the, the C the C manual. The C manual. I was like, well, maybe you are a CEO. The CEO. No, technically my job description is direct. Actually, I don't even know what my job description is. Your earphones Director, sound like they're under the water. CEO. Technically self-employed. Homeless. Passive income. Neat. <laughs> <laughs> Empty wallet. <laughs> Redundant most, play button. <laughs> most of my money going into useless toys, like an ornament microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, dumbass. So this is Critical. He's the man behind the collaborations such as the KZCZX Pro or the, also known as the KZCRN. Been behind Good. the Moon Drop. <laughs> the Moon Drop Dusk. Is it the two or the Dusk? Yeah, I mean... Is it the Dusk uh, Blessing 2? Yeah, so it's the Blessing 2 Dusk version. Dusk, dusk edition. So, okay, the Blessing 2 Dusk version Critical collab. Waifu earphone. Yeah. Almost, but because you, as as you have noted, it's a mouthful, so people just call it dusk. As the by dusk. dusk. By dusk. I recently had a collaboration with Fio, the FHE Eclipse, and is, is it pronounced Fio or Fio? Fio. How do you Fio. Pro, How do you pronounce W I I? You. <laughs> Got him. Fio. So it's Fio, right? No, it's Fio. 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 You know when a mosquito <laughs> flies high, yeah, yeah. The high frequencies. It's what they're good at, you know. Mm. He's been behind the FIO FEH Eclipse and he's gonna run out of sunset names sooner or later. But either way, I've got a couple of questions for you True. about the whole process of collaborating with these brands because I think the viewers want, want to know like what actually goes on here. How much are you actually involved or are you just slapping your name to get a paycheck? Yes. He is. <laughs> First question, how do these collaborations start? Do you approach them or do they approach you? Or, you know, it depends on the project. Yeah, it depends on the project. A lot of projects start out with me suggesting it to them. For example, the Moondrop one, uh, the KZ one, the Fio one, probably. I, th I can't remember a lot of like who started what conversation. The KZ one, which, which I assume is what you're going to review, right? I'm not really reviewing any of this. I can't add anything to the conversation. <laughs> I think most of most of the time it's my idea. Mm -hmm. Like I try and pitch it to them. I, I basically do like an elevator pitch of like, hey guys, you know, why not I slap my name on your shit and then we can both make money at the same time. Uh, it sounds dubious, but it works for the dusk mm -hmm. and because it worked for the dusk everyone else started trying to cram themselves into my collaboration projects and uh, which is why in two months we had uh, three came out the KZ one the Fio one and the midnight all of which were crammed oh, yeah. into a period of December 2021 to January 2022 which is why I was asking like where were you guys literally the rest of the year like why at the end of the year I don't understand I think they want to go for that Christmas you know? yeah but not when everyone is coming in at the same yeah. time right not wise right yeah. you want to find your own <laughs> Niche. Right? Every, yeah, everything's making money. I, as as the guy who receives the money, I'm not complaining. They are complaining because everything is competing. Not really, but because they're all like different price brackets, right? Yeah. But still, they'll be like, oh, the cannibalization here, cannibalization there, blah blah blah. Tell tell me in the comments, guys. Do you think she looks like female clinical? No, they're, they're all blind. Clinical look. Same specs. Yeah, same specs. That's same face shape too. I think you're blind if you think we have the shape, the same face shape. Generally, just a circle. Absolutely not. I think I think you're just a bit blind. <laughs> what is the process like of? developing these earphones you know and do you just call like call them and be like oh in 30 hertz can you increase it by 0 0.001 decibels do you want the nerd answer or do you want the super simple dumb it down for how about months? both okay so the super simple dumb it down is yes it's something like that but yeah. it's like oh can you can you raise this up can you drop this down mm -hmm. and etc etc yeah. more nerd answer is that because all of us have very different equipment and therefore we have to extrapolate based off existing data so i'm there to facilitate like okay your equipment measures like this my equipment measures like that we have to have like a common ground they don't know how to do that so i'm kind of like the 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 middleman the bridge mm -hmm. to connect 
their data with my data so that both of us can uh, work together because it's, it's not just enough for them to show you like a graph of their system right because mm -hmm. yeah the graph would end up not 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 being the same so the complicated part is that it's not just as easy as oh do this do that do yeah. this do that you, you have to basically set the foundation first and setting right. that foundation is the hardest part so with different manufacturers they have different system all, all on the same standard but unfortunately same standard doesn't necessarily mean same uh, calibration yeah so all of that needs to be taken in consideration and after all of this has been settled, only then can you start talking about the tuning. And th this part, this whole thing on calibration and trying to have parity with each other is probably the biggest limiting factor in terms of collaborating. Then after that, it's more or less the, the easy part where it's like, okay, again, boot it up here, drop it down there. And then of course, we have to talk about uh, crossover values and whatnot. That, that's a different nerd mm. talk where it's less about looking at graph and telling them to pull it up and down yeah. and more about like, all right, you know, you use this, you use this uh, crossover, can you like lower the crossover point up? Yeah. And it's, it gets more technical at that point. You yeah. can even tell them to change drivers as well. Like, oh, I don't like this one. Like, uh, I think that was at one point they said they were using a driver called the 30017 and that was we call it the basic bitch driver because everyone is using it so we're like can you, can you upgrade that into like maybe you know we, like we would do talks like that uh-huh is there like a type of sound that you set up to with this earphone like you know you and them discuss oh yeah i really want this to be the, like the fire one it's the one with the bass right mm -hmm. you just do you set up from the start like oh we should go for a bass focus one here because i haven't made one like that and then mm -hmm. you know you work from there or is it you the other way around you, you decide okay these parts probably better this combination of like uh, parts and designs end up with this type of sound and you're very happy with how it turned out i think we start out with the baseline model because every single almost every single one of my collabs starts out from a baseline model so for the midnight is the yume for the for the eclipse is the fh3 mm -hmm. for the dusk it's the blessing 2 Mm -hmm. And the, the the ones that were ground up, like not based on anything, was the, the CRN as well as the Dawn. But for these kinds of, like for example, the Fio ones, right? We start out with the baseline. We take the FH3, which we try to get it to my my definition of neutral, mm -hmm. and then we will see how the drivers react to that. Yeah, yeah. So we we want to basically force the driver into doing something that it cannot do. Yeah. So once we try and we force it into kind of like a best fit line, yeah. kind of. Then we decide like okay uh is can we what can we do with this signature so for the for the eclipse it was once we modified everything it was already very uh bassy mm -hmm. and we realized like okay we, we can't really change the bass that much yeah. so at that point they and we decide i decided that okay rather than try and shoehorn the bass into something less why don't we just go full into it being just a bassy iron so it, it basically as we go along we find out like okay what can we do what we, what can we not do with mm -hmm. the current driver setups and then we just keep iterating from there so the fear was bassy the midnight was honestly just like okay we got to this point all right i guess it's fine so it's more or less trying to get the best out of the drivers as yeah. opposed to trying to tune into everything to sound the same like have you had any crazy ideas and how open are that your all your ideas i have a shit ton of crazy ideas <laughs> unfortunately they are crazy for a reason yeah. and therefore uh either and they don't have the drivers right now because okay there there is i have been looking at trying to do a vibrator iam for the longest time okay <laughs> take that out of context it's uh it's it's, it's an iam where the iam literally vibrates to the base but not in, in a similar way to the skull crushers the skull can use skull crushers yeah but in iam form mm. and not as stupid it's subtle makes it subtle but at the same time such that when the base hits there's at least some form of tactility there going on. Uh, that, that's a very crazy idea. I have I have some case studies, some IEMs that do use this like actuation technology. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's so crazy to the point where no one's actually making these drivers. And so, okay. I, you know, I, I have a lot of similar crazy ideas. I, I can give you keywords like no context, no context ideas. Uh, fishbowl. I have um, open planar ear speaker, um, the vibrator earphone. I explained yeah. that. Like when I explain it, it's fine. But when I say no context is yeah. it sounds really weird. There's a 
there, there was one idea that was, ah uh, yes, ball of BAs. <laughs> you just put BAs in all directions. I'm not gonna explain it. it I'm just gonna make it sound as stupid as possible. It's genius when I explain it, but right now, because I don't want any one of you to steal my ideas, yeah. I'm just gonna say ball of BAs. Uh, there's an one called the BA Array, but I don't think that's gonna work. It looks, it looks like a honeycomb, yeah. you just put it literally like a headphone, it'll never work, but... <laughs> what what are the what are the like most notable things that you've done on like a earphone that you're very proud of? Like the most notable like when you pick up one of your collabs. Mm -hmm. Like what's the most what's the most memorable thing out of all the adjustments and tweaks that you, you go and like oh yeah that part that's me. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's uh, all of them, I guess. <laughs> I guess you could say that the most memorable would literally be the first one, which would be the fearless dawn. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it was built from the ground up. It's not based on any existing. Yeah. There is a system called the Y two K. It's yeah. basically like I use knobs to tune it, yeah. and then I send I send the, the 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 settings to the factory. They replicate it. They send it back, and then we we start to tweak from there. So that was an interesting and of course very me memorable project. Unfortunately, it flopped because it was too expensive. Which which is now which is why now a lot of my collabs you can see like steadily trying to decrease in price because I've learned from from that a very. Yeah painful lesson that yeah. I don't have that kind of clout in the very expensive IEM land. Mm -hmm. Most of my clout is for, 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 for budget stuff. Mid-range. Even if you want to, if, even if I'm so facetious as to call 330 USD uh, budget. <laughs> <laughs> Rich cunt. <laughs> Final, most important question out of all of these is uh, how much do they pay you? Enough. They pay me money. That's more than I can say about brands that work with me. No eye contact. Oh no. <laughs>